What's going on, my boy? What's poppin'? Back on yeah. live with another episode of Gabs TV. Yeah, I think we need to add this one in though. Please make sure you like, subscribe, make sure you follow all content we release. 8 p.m. <laughs> Every two days. Tuesday's the next one. So make sure you're logged in. How you doing, my boy? How's it going? Chilling, chilling. Not bad. Man Not at the bad. moment. Something like that. So yeah, um, Trend Central X E4 Blue Therapy Premiere in Love yeah. and Toxic. Yeah. What? What's, what? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're right. Don't, don't act brand new now. No, no. The Trend Central part is what confused oh, me. Oh, oh, oh. But I forget it's the same. Yeah, yeah, Andy, yeah. Andy, shout out to Andy. Come on, Andy, for real, for real. Come on, man. How was that, man? How did you find it? It was nice. It was nice. Uh, I think I was overdressed for it. Shouts to Zoe. Talk I'm about overdressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, let the people know what you wore. She, I wore some some velvet blazer and some. Uh, what's the trousers with the little line, the silk tux, line thing? Tux, tux, the tux trousers, and mm, I put mm, some mm, shoes. Mm, She's mm. telling me I have to dress like this and whatever else. Like, yeah, it's a proper. These times, guys are coming there in jeans and. Sh- you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what no. are you doing to me? Like, it, it was right still. There? It was a fly thing, though. It was a fly thing. Yeah, I mean, look, we well, rocking in twelve. It. Look, it was alright, rocking and enjoying, enjoying the moment, innit? So, <laughs> yeah, it was good. Still it was good fun. Though. How did you um? How did you find it? So, how was how was the um the actual premiere as a whole in terms of what you watched uh, the the acts? What, what what do people have to look forward to? I mean, look, it's interesting. It's nice. It was a, it was it was good when I watched it. We basically watched the film for an hour. Um, did I agree with some of the things that the people said in it? Um, you know, 15k and all that for Miami. I mean, like, what world are you in? Like, ah, you were mean, lying, have you? Uh, look, I'm gonna say personally, you're you're chatting shit. <laughs> <laughs> but look, if that's how you want to talk and pretend like how you behave, mate. I don't even I don't even spend a grand on myself on holiday. You telling me you give someone 15 grand, you got three kids. Come on, let's be serious. For 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 a trip to Miami on a solo trip, what are you buy for 15k? Well, I don't get it. And you don't rap or you're not like, what What are you? <laughs> I don't get it. Well, <laughs> there's no, <laughs> did you take the music or you took, you took a, a makeup artist with you or something? What did you do? I don't get it. But anyway, you know, what was more exciting for me was the after bit okay. and the before bit when we could talk and, you know, everyone was like networking. chilling and networking and all. I saw ZZ there and we was chilling and that was Jeez, nice. Jeez, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're a proper celeb to be fair, influencer now. Mm-hmm. And the way that is good. I wouldn't go as far as that. Are you, you locking hands and shaking hands with ZZ and them? You get me? But I knew her from church. So it's a bit of a default. She, like, I, I, I knew her before all of that. We that, went to the same church together. So I've always been a fan of hers, to be fair. She's she's proper cool. Like she, She's always been cool. Ain't that the beautiful thing though? Like, you know knowing each other in a church space, growing up together, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then actually linking up in a, in a completely different space where it's now more industry, you know, she's doing her thing, you're coming through doing your yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? And you're actually both, you know, in this space, I'm able to talk. Yeah, that's yeah, good. definitely, definitely. That, that's good. But she was more, she was more church, church going. I I, I went to the church for girls. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm going to say something different, but... We know what we was going there for at the time. We was going, we was going to go and impress or do something silly. On that note, I think that's a perfect way to segue into what we're talking about today, in terms of um, lying. And I, I think you'd probably be best in in terms of elaborating on this. Like, you know, I'm not even going to talk about what aspect of lying. I'll I'll let you because it's broad. You can you can specify on on the aspect of lying, especially within relationships. If if we want to. Make it a bit more specific. Lying in relationships. Yeah, like. What about it exactly? What are you, what so, like, for example, you know. What What is the factors for people lying in their relationships? Is it not being truthful to themselves? Is it Is it people that you know? Is Is it them lying to themselves? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, what, you know, usually causes these conflicts? Like, even taking it to what we saw on on Blue Therapy, you know, you know, fifteen k to send your your babes to Miami. And, and you've got three kids and, you know, that's not to say, you know, he, he was lying, you know, but everyone's reality is different. If you, it, as far as like, let's say, let's say something like blue therapy and all that, and, and that you're lying. I mean, that's a whole lie. It, it's got, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean to sound like an arsehole or something, but 
people that do 15k normal to give to their girlfriends to go on holiday for for whatever are not trying to be on camera especially when you've got baby mums i imagine you have baby mums you have three baby mums your baby mum one or two is hearing that you gave your girlfriend who isn't responsible for none of your kids 15k to go have a good time in miami well, are you gonna hope all your child support payments are, are, are on point? Your kids are, are, are like, yeah? Because how the fuck are you, how are you justifying that? So I need to know what business my man does. I, and for whatever business he does, I wanna be involved too. I, not to give 15K, but to have the 15K. I, I'll use it on something. <laughs> I don't, you know, lying in relationships is just normal. I think we've normalized it, which is sad. Um, it's needed. Sometimes, but sad. Um, I think when we lie to the point where we're lying to ourselves, I think we've talked about this before, I think that's when it just becomes dangerous. Because keeping up with a lie is harder than what you actually think. And what happens is, is that people can see through your lies eventually because the cracks start coming in. So if I take myself, for example, and I look at the relationships that I've had with different women, I wasn't truthful about who I was. I wasn't truthful about what I was. I wasn't truthful about what I believe personally. And that's because I want to give a good impression. But the truth of the matter is, it's more so because I want to catch you. I want you to be able to feel me in the way that you want to feel someone, which is that I've listened to you enough to know, okay, you like this type of guy, so I'm going to now make myself be that type of guy to get you. And then once I've achieved what I've achieved, whether it be to fuck you or to whatever, then what's gonna happen is slowly, I might stop picking up my phone as much. I might not message straight away. My engagement slows down because the reality is, is that I probably didn't want to be in a relationship, I just wanted to fuck you. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and if I told you I just wanted to fuck you on that day, what might have happened is you might have just said no. And because, let's say I might be infatuated by the idea of actually fucking you, it would force me to lie to you, to deceive you, to make you like me, to achieve that, which is a safer option. So if you go to an interview now, you say, like, you go to work interview, I'm not gonna tell the person that's trying to employ me, yeah, I have experience in this, 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 but I also have friends that smoke weed and chill, and I like to chill in an area where it's got gang violence and what. I ain't going to say all of those things. I'm going to lie and make out like I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? Because naturally, I don't want to get the wrong impression of me. And the reality is some people, like for myself, when I'm employing people, I'd rather you just tell me the truth. But I can't expect everybody to want to hear the truth. You can't expect everybody to want to hear the truth. It makes no sense because people like to judge. You know, so. Could you, could you say, because I, I, I hear what you're saying as well. Um, could you say that... Um... For some people, it might not be a lie for them, in the sense that, like, in reference to what you're saying about the girl, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, yeah? like, in terms of, you know, sometimes you could just like a girl, like, you like her so much, yeah, you just want to impress, so, the first three weeks, you're doing the thing, you're like, right, like, you know what, I'm doing this because this is what I want to do, so it's not necessarily you're lying to the girl, this is, what, this is the work that you're putting in at this time, but, like, with most men, like, you know, like, you, you, you not, post not clarity, your work rate drops, the intensity drops. It can, it can, it can feel like it's a lie, but you know, like you, you, you almost swindled her. But in, in reality, he, he, he likes you. B. Now it's like with, it's like when you got a job. Like oh, again, referencing the job. After you do your three months probation and you know you've been here, you're, you're here now. You're not gonna be coming. You know, you start work at seven. You're not gonna come in at six. You might come in at six forty-five now. Do you get what I mean? Because you know the layout. You know what's pattern. Like you know what the situation is. So. You're not gonna be as active. Do you get what I'm saying? It becomes normal. You know? Um, and and I, I guess to, 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 to my point, I think most, well, some people in their minds, and this might be a thing where it goes into, you know, lying to yourself or battling with yourself. You maybe not be truthful to themselves in when they're taking their initial approaches. Or maybe they are truthful to themselves and actually it's just how emotional they are. Once I'm not, you know, speaking from personal experience, like, I, you know me, I'm an emotional person. I love everybody. But do I love them, though? Do you get what I'm saying? I said it the other day on my, on my social, like, 
I, 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 I feel like I fall in love all the time. <laughs> but, 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 do you get what I'm saying? Because I, I can meet a girl and I really like you. Like, your vibe is... And then, you know what? I don't like you, innit? <laughs> do you get it? Trust me. What's he say again? What's he say again? Love them. Huh? Tender, tender touch them. them. Different, yeah. Every day. <laughs> Alright, so air this now. Shout out to my brother Stephen. Nah, you're toxic though. Uh, I, I am. Can, toxic. I can't even sing that song after all this. I am yeah. toxic. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a good toxic, I'm not a bad toxic. But yeah, for, based on what you just said, mm. there was a time there was these night trainers, yeah, that were like grey. You could zip the front and it had orange in the bubble. It looked like one tens, but with a zip. Yeah. Me and Skrilla used to go past JD and look at this trainer all the goddamn time. And man, I don't know if it was the lights in JD Sports. This is old school Stratford. I don't know if it was the people there. But every time we used to go in JD Sports, there was a lot of window shopping going on. Come, I ain't got no money. Whenever we looked at these trainers, it was like, fuck, this is mad. They look so nice. Bro, you couldn't get over it. It was mental. Skrilla, obviously, being Skrilla, shout out to Skrilla. He managed to get his. Of course, I didn't get mine. Skrilla's quite more smart than me then, as far as that stuff. And I remember, I kept on thinking about these crepes. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I'd do anything for them crepes. I think my brother, shout out to Steve, he figured that I wanted these crepes. And I don't know if he agreed because he saw the way I looked at Larry wearing it, or I don't know what he saw, but he saw it and he eventually bought it for me. So now I've got them. I swear to you, when I had them, I smelled inside of it. You know that shoe smell? Fresh smell. You know that smell? I smelled inside of it. I looked at it. I just, I, I didn't, it was in my room. It was in the, I don't know if it was my birthday girl for me. I, whichever way, I don't, it doesn't mean matter. And I just couldn't get over it. To the point where I didn't even want to wear it. I thought to myself, fuck, these crepes are sweet. So I'd put them on in my room. And then they put them in my room, my room, my floor was dirty because we didn't really clean that much. I had to wipe the bottom, whatever else. Skrilla's just wearing it. It's like, yeah, it's too late now. You, you already got it. Eventually, I started wearing it. I'd go out, I'd wear it. I'd clean it, I'd come back. Wear it again, clean it, come back. Over time, my desire for how fresh and how sweet it was, was going. In actual fact, it got to the point where, in actual fact, it become battered. And I was onto another pair of trainers that I liked. Now, I'm not comparing um, women to trainers. But what I need you to understand is the value that you see the thing at the time that you see it may not be the value that you appreciate a year down the line or six months down the line. Which is that you could see someone and think to yourself, fuck, damn, whoo, shit. Good lord, you found. But then after a while, when you've tasted it and you've touched it and you've had it, sometimes you start thinking, was it really all that? Was it really? And then there's another pair of trainers that comes. So you make yourself believe that this thing is the only thing you want. And when I have this, I want nothing else. Until you wear it for a bit and realize after a while it's wear and tear. You know, your perception then changes about the thing. You want a different one. Now, that's not comparing the two, but if anything, that gives you a bit of an understanding as to how sometimes you can be infatuated by something until you have it. When you have it and you use it for a few times, after a while, you ain't as infatuated as you thought you was. In actual fact, now nah, it's just any pair of trainers and now you want another one. That one there is just basically maturity again. You're not understanding that in actual fact, which I understand now. When I buy a brand new pair of kicks, I'm not going to lie to you. I only buy the ones that I truly, truly like. I won't buy it because someone else bought it or because someone else likes it. Which is that I won't like that girl because someone else likes her. Not the way I used to. I only like you if I truly, truly like you. And you know what? Because I truly, truly like you, I'll wipe it and I appreciate it. I've got these Jordans that I put on here today. I've had them for at least two years now. If you go and look at them, Mate, you don't see a scuff on them. And I still go home and I wipe them. Not because I can't buy another one, but because I truly, truly like these crepes. 
See, when you truly, truly like someone, it's not about the infatuation at the moment. You just like that person. And infatuation goes out of the window. It's like, yes, you are still on the person, but it's more than just the look of the person. It's more than just what this person or that person thinks of the person. In your heart, it really, really like that person. So let's say if I go back when I'm younger, a lot of the girls that I liked when I was younger, for my social group, mate, <laughs> you have to go around the corner, hide a satin, because I can't allow people to know that I like you. According to my social group, you're dead. <laughs> and that pepper is a bitch. You know what I mean? So I'm only going to bring around the girls that I believe my social group is going to be like, yeah, so I can feel like, all right, cool. I ain't letting the team down. Do you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, when I think about it, those ones come and they left. The ones that actually stayed were really the ones that I truly did like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I guess it's where you place value. You know, and I never really placed value in some of the things that I truly liked. I placed value in the things that I felt other people liked. Because I thought that by liking the things that other people liked, it would give me more value, you know, in the ways that I thought I wanted to have value. But I didn't really want it that way. When I think about it, hindsight, but very important learning curve though. So, don't be completely infatuated by the girl you see. Actually know her and like her before you lose your brain. And if you know you just want to fuck, don't lie. Just tell her you want to fuck. She might just want to fuck you back. Fair play.